Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. Welcome back. You're watching Captains of Industry. Now, Oliver Fortain's roots are at IBM. He worked for the company in several capacities for about 12 years before taking what I call a brief sabbatical at Hulard Packard as managing director. His big drive at the moment is expansion into new markets like Angola and Senegal. We heard about that before the break. He's also passionate personally about social issues and has implored IBM staffers to volunteer their time in projects like Habitat for Humanity. As part of the centennial celebrations of IBM, Oliver Fortain joins us tonight as our captain of industry. As I said, you have your roots at IBM. You worked there. Then you were part of Lenovo when there was that takeover. Then you went to Hulot Packard and then you came back. So in many ways, you're a child of the IBM. Yes. Yeah, I'd, I, I'd agree with that. I, I started my career at IBM and, uh, you know, IBM feels like home and always has. So, but I've been privileged to work in the industry for a few good companies. Yeah. What about the depth of knowledge when people talk about, you know, obviously having been at IBM for so long, you understand the company, it's in your DNA, you understand the culture, um, its values. But what about the, the need to open your perspective by having been elsewhere? I know you were the head at Hewlett Packard for a while, but yeah. others would say maybe you should have spread your wings a little bit more. Uh, I, I, I think there's certainly value in, in, in gaining a different perspective. I, are there people who spend their whole lives in, in a single company and do superbly well? You know, and um, I, I don't think there's any necessarily right or wrong model. I think mm. there's no downside for having experienced the market from another perspective and seeing, um, you know, getting insight from how our customers interact with uh, with essentially our competitors. You know, and, and also learning that. Um, there are many companies out there who's, who the core values of these companies are very similar. Um, they're very st strongly rooted in ethics and integrity yeah. and, and, and the way they do business. Um, but they're very different businesses culturally. Yeah. And, and that was a big learning. So what's the definitive aspect then of IBM? What, what does IBM represent for you um, in terms of those values, in terms of that global perspective? Yeah, I, th I think IBM stands for all the things I mentioned. You know, it is a very strongly ethical company. Um, it lives by by its ethical values, and it won't tolerate a breach of those values, mm -hmm. uh, which to me is critically important. Uh, but we spoke about innovation, and I do think that um, in our industry, IBM has been at the forefront of, of innovation for a very long time, um, and. It's, it's, it's the, I wouldn't say just the one thing, but it's certainly one of the things that strongly differentiates IBM from the rest. Mm. Okay. Now, IBM also has a, a leadership survey that it undertakes. And at the moment, you know, we've been relying a lot on those insights because it's helping us understand how leaders are coping with volatile markets, a world post-recession, just the challenges and the murky mm. waters we're operating in. 83% of leaders who've been sampled internationally anticipate major fissures, that there are going to be some serious, serious market movements going forward that will just change the business landscape. As a leader, what do you think of the world we live in today? I, I think that's true. You know, I think um, you, you kind of if you read a lot of the financial mail, you read that um, every, every uh, financial crisis, you know, obviously precipitated by everything we did wrong leading up to it, but is normally followed by a fairly uh, big shift in the marketplace. And I think, uh, you know, IT is sort of coming into this crisis. I think IT was losing its sexy, if you like. Yeah. And I think it's, re it's really regaining its sexy. And it's, it's more relevant to business today, I think, than it's ever been. Um, and I think you're going to see a, a much stronger marriage between IT and business deliverables mm. than we've ever seen in the past. And I think things like analytics are very big. It doesn't matter what you talk about anymore, whether you're talking about healthcare or banking or, you know, it's the data on time in the right format, yeah. analyzed in a way the business can digest is becoming a critical differentiator. Uh, you know, so that's one good example. Um, but yes, I think uh, in terms of convergence and consolidation, uh, telcos and banks getting mm. together, you know, IT companies and hospitals mm. getting together. Yes. That's I, the future. I think that's the future. For you, though, personally, does, are you comfortable with the fact that there's so many ructions uh, in, in, in global markets? Because effectively it means that change is a permanent state of mind. It is, it is 
the definitive aspect of how you're going to operate. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I guess you could argue that we're changing all the time. It's only the rate of change that, that, that you know, is, is dramatically accelerated at the moment. Um, I, I think we're in, we're in for accelerated change, um, you know, for time to come. And I think the companies that innovate, and the companies that lead that change are the ones that will do well. So I'm comfortable, yes, from an IBM perspective, I'm very comfortable in a personal from perspective. From an Oliver Fortain perspective? From an Oliver I'm, perspective, I'll tell you, I'm I, can't, I, I love change, yes. but as you're saying, the rate of change. I don't like things happening too quickly around me. It unsettles me personally. Right. I get a, a little agitated. Yes. I, I, I'm enjoying what's happening at the moment. It's difficult to predict what's going to happen. It's if you take the IT landscape as an example, it's difficult. What's uh, it's difficult to predict what will happen with companies that were traditionally IT companies and traditionally telcos getting together. The models that will emerge out of that, you know, using cloud computing and so on. Mm. Very difficult to predict where that's going to end up. And I think that change is going to happen rapidly. And I'm personally excited by it. Actually, I mean, if you think about it from a consumer perspective. Yeah. The ease of use that you've inherited in the last 10 years yeah. is tremendous, is dramatic, and I think that will continue. Please help me. I've heard this term so many times, cloud computing. Yes. Help me. So, so, <laughs> so you, could, you could, again, you can argue cloud's been around for a long time, but basically it's buying a service um, you know, out, of, uh, out of the cloud. So as long as you're connected, you can access the service, mm -hmm. and you buy it on a predictable basis, but you never worry what sits behind it. You don't worry about the computing power, and you don't worry about, uh -huh. you know, so um, you know, various people will argue. So people who provide hosting services will say, but we've been doing cloud for a while. Mm -hmm. People, you know, we spoke about grid computing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a form of cloud and so on. But this is really how do you commercialize an engine with all the right bits and pieces in place, and then sell that onward as a service to right. a community. Um, so, so you know, Apple are going to do it uh, with their music uh, online store, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see many, many examples, especially in the consumer world. The telcos are very focused on it because it's the most logical way for them to deliver content to to us, the paying public. Okay, th that was just for my personal education. Okay, all right. Okay, I, d I don't know about the viewers, but that was <laughs> me personally. Your love for the community, uh, apparently under your leadership, uh, staff at IBM have been encouraged to give back their time. I know that IBM has uh, a corporate core uh, program where people, you know, take time off work and go and lend their services in other areas. But you've specifically said, you know what, I want to see people dedicating their time, charities, Habitat for Humanity, do it. And not just doing it as part of the centennial celebrations. Why is that important to you? I think it's, uh, it's important that we, um, as a company, um, operate, uh, or that the community we, that we operate in is a community that A, we understand, uh, B, we care about, but it is important that we give back. I mean, I think about not just our context in South Africa, but the African context. I don't believe these governments um, have the ability to fix all of the problems in front of them. You know, we, we talk about crime in our country being a socio-economic issue. And what's government doing about it? Well, government can't fix it by itself. Mm -hmm. Business ha has to lend a hand, but we've already seen that in the fight against crime that you know community policing has massive impact. We've already seen that feeding our kids in the township, mm -hmm. you know, comes from uh, initiatives out of the community. Where does that consciousness stem from in your life? Um, pretty much how I grew up, I guess. You know, growing up in a poor community, um, having been the beneficiary of of um, of CSI-like programs, and having you know, having felt the personal impact of that has certainly shaped the way I see it. Mm. And I do believe that we make a fundamental difference when we engage as individuals. Is that how you also father your children? Very much so. And do they say to you, no, not this Saturday. This Saturday is mine. <laughs> I'm not going into a township well, to do something. They're typical teenagers. <laughs> so yes, they're not, they're not uh, always anxious to volunteer, but I've got, a, you know, I've got one son in med school. Um, and so by definition of what he's doing, he's had to do quite a lot of that. And I have a, a son who's just entered varsity, and, and I have to say, pleasingly, that he's becoming a lot more conscious about his environment yeah. and about the fact that he can make a personal difference. I understand what you're saying, because I too come from the townships and had to see my parents work their way up and, and that sort of thing. But often I feel like we're being sanctimonious, if that's a fair statement. We are mm. conscious because we come from there. Right. But often when we're trying to drive this social awareness agenda, it's taken on a morality 
that, that, that often isn't fair for other people. Yeah, I, um, I guess what you're saying is that, um, you know, that our experiences have shaped us to this point and therefore we, you know, for us it comes maybe a bit more naturally. Yeah. I think in terms of sanctimonious, I, I would say um, not so much in that it's not something that I would ever force on anybody. You know, I think that give back has to be exactly that. It's got to be something that you choose to do. Mm -hmm. And I think encouraging people may be the sanctimonious part. Um, but I think without doing that, you know, without, um, without a few people sort of stirring the pot and so on, you, you won't get the momentum to mm -hmm. do this, right? In corporate SA, obviously, we see CSI projects, but they're, div you know, they're driven on the basis that in Increasingly, companies are being forced to have an environmental, social governance agenda, not because it informs that consciousness. And we keep on hearing our leaders from Desmond Tutu across the board imploring corporate SA to take on a social awareness. Well, what is it going to take to change the mindset in corporate SA that um, it's, it, business is not just about profits, it's mm. also about being part of the social democratic revolution we talk about? Yeah. And that's a very good question. I, I do think that there's still, um, I think there's a lot of place still for dialogue uh, between government and business. I don't think uh, we're necessarily as close to each other as we should be. And one area is, is, is the area of you know, corporate social responsibility. And especially things like enterprise development, where you're talking about building sustainable local businesses. Um, that collaboration you know, between government and, and business I think is is too fragile for it to create really big impact projects. Uh, the more we collaborate, the more um, you know South African businesses less um, I won't say hostile, but less mm. suspicious of each other. Mm. Um, the the better the impact we'll have. Um, but it, you know we're not close enough, government and business at this stage. I would say. Now, finally, you have a very deep love for the water for the ocean and when you're not leading IBM, you're swimming and you're diving. Why is that? Well, I, I um, started swimming at a very young age. I started swimming competitively at a very young age. And um, so I guess I've, I've always been in the water. Uh, anything to do with the water makes me comfortable. I do admit that there was a time for about five or six years when I, you know, as a, as a competitive swimmer, you mm. start to think that maybe this is nuts when you've had five hours in the water. Mm. Um, but there's nothing I'd rather do, so it's, it's, in, it's in my genes, I guess. What does the water do for you? That's what I'm trying to it understand. It calms me. It's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's, uh, it's like home. So whether I'm diving or I'm just swimming or I'm water skiing, you know, whatever I, I do on the water calms me. You've been a very calm leader in my conversation with you. Measured, calculated in your thinking, conscientious, but very calm, never rattled at any point in time. And I think that's probably the mark of your success. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Loretta. Oliver Fontaine, he is the uh, head of IBM for Sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, he's been our captain of industry tonight, joining us very much as part of IBM's centennial celebrations. And as I said, he's very cool, he's very calm, he's really collected and uh, absolutely rooted to the soil and to the communities in which he serves. Thanks for watching and do join us again for the next edition of Captains of Industry.